Bordel Paub, Croeso, welcome. It's a very, very odd experience to be talking to you all and not being able to see you. I'm very look, much looking forward to next year when I we will hopefully all be back in the hall and meeting and greeting as we would normally do. Um, so I'm just here really to talk to you about what year seven will look like, what transition will look like for next year, and hopefully to answer any questions that you may have about the whole experience. Transition to secondary school is a really, really big deal. And I am really privileged to have this job of smoothing that transition process from primary to secondary for our pupils, for parents and carers, and working with our primary colleagues and working with yourselves so that we, we can all make the best things happen for our new starters. It's a really exciting time. It's the beginning of a seven year, five year journey with us. So um, yeah, it's a real privilege for me and I'm really looking forward to meeting our, our next year group. Um, I have a, a, a PowerPoint presentation to share with you, so I'll click through and we'll, we'll talk through that as, as we go. Okay, so first of all, the main thing that everyone wants to know is what will happen during transition. So this year, obviously, doing everything under very different circumstances, we had two days of transition with our current year sevens. And um, the whole point of these transition days is just to calm anxieties. Any, I mean, any anxiety is a very sensible one that we've had no, you know, it, it might seem like a really silly thing, but if it's affecting you and affecting our, our new learners, then it's a big deal. So any anxieties we take really seriously. And the whole point is to just calm nerves so people are excited to start school with us when September com comes around. So the well-being of our new learners is really top priority. If we've got happy learners, then we're going to have, if we've got happy pupils, we're going to have pupils who want to learn and who want to be in the school and, you know, giving them the best start is the best thing that we can hope for. So that's number one. We do a lot of work um, lo looking at mental health and our um, new learners well-being. So that's really important to us. Um, our next point there is working with our primary colleagues and yourselves as parents and carers to support the new cohort. So we spend a lot of time going into primary schools, meeting our year sixes, meeting our year fives, meeting their parents, meeting their teachers who taught them for the last six, five, six years, really getting to know them, getting to know what kind of support they need, what kind of things they really excel in, what kind of things they're interested in, so that when we come up to September, we can hit the ground running and we can really, we can really fly with that. <clears throat> Obviously, a really big part of transition is making new friends. You know, some of our um, some of our pupils might come, say, from a primary school that has a really big year six, and they'll they'll have lots of friends coming up with them, which is lovely. Some of our new starters may come, maybe the only one coming up from their primary school. So we have the whole the whole range of pupils there. So we spend a lot of time in form groups with their new form tutor. <coughs> excuse me, um, making new friends and really kind of getting to know other people, widening their social circle. Um, so, of course, there is an opportunity to for you as parents and carers and for the pupils to say, oh, I've got this one particular friend who's going to help me feel less, less anxious. So I'd really like to be with them in a form. And that's fine. And we will meet those requirements like as much as we possibly can. But also it's a real good opportunity to make those new friends and to widen that circle and to really get involved with everything that's going on. Getting to know the building is a really big, really important thing for our new starters. Um, that's quite a common anxiety is so I might get lost. I might be late to a lesson and it is a big place. But, you know, once we find once our new starters have been with us a week, fortnight, maybe a half term, um, then they really do know their way around and they're quite comfortable and we're not getting lost and we're not going to lessons. A really important thing to make our learners aware of is if they ever do get lost, it's really, really easy to find an adult nearby or one of the older students and just to say, look, do you know what? I'm lost. I'm trying to get to humanities. I'm trying to get to Welsh and they'll point them in the right direction. But we spend a lot of time having tours, having scavenger hunts, just so getting around the building becomes second nature. It's also really important for our new learners to get to know the staff, get to know who's going to be working with them and supporting them over the next five to seven years. So we spend a lot of time working our way through the different departments, meeting the staff, you know, making sure that everyone knows who the friendly faces are, who they can go to. Understanding new routines is obviously really important for our new year six, year sevens who come up. Obviously in primary school, they would have got very used to how things work and how things operate in primary school. So it's important that we spend a bit of time just, you know, reinforcing that the equipment that's expected of them to bring. It might be PE kits or what we expect to see in their pencil cases, things like that. Just kind of, re you know, making sure everyone feels comfortable and happy in their new place of learning. Um, understanding new expectations. Obviously, it would be hugely unfair if 
we just kind of set off going without explaining how things works and how we want to work with our new sevens. So we spend a lot of time going to the uniform with them and how we how we learn in the classroom. You know, do, do we want to see hands up? Do we want to see shouting up? What do we want to see? And that might differ from lesson to lesson. It might differ from department to department. But um, spending a lot of time just making sure that the learners know how they can best succeed. So that's really important to us as well. And then finally, we want them to have a fantastic time. We want them to make progress in their learning of, and education. Of course we do. So within that tra transition few days, it's just really important that they feel comfortable, feel confident so that then they can go on and they can get on with their learning. So that's what transition will look like, first of all. OK, so then we operate on a two week timetable. So again, that might be something that's quite different to what happens in primary school and the timetable of first glance. It might be quite confusing, but this is an example. This is what um, year, an example year seven timetable this year. So you can see um, all the subjects, their names. We've got humanities, maths, Welsh, science, French on day one, for example. The Monday of day one then it's got the um, teacher's initials so you can see who's teaching and it's got the room number so they can know where they physically have to go because that's quite a difference for our primary students is that in primary school often they stay in one room and they have one teacher or they might have a few teachers during the day but here all of a sudden they might have five teachers in one day so it is a big difference but they really love the challenge what, why I have found this is my fourth year now of being head of year seven and they really rise to that challenge of meeting those different people okay so this is a little taster of what kind of things we'll be looking at in the different subjects. Um, many of our year sixes do do science in primary school and that's wonderful, but they're really excited to get to the science labs, getting the Bunsen burners, making things explode, different colours, flames, they, they really love it. So that's really exciting. So they do lots of work in the science labs. We have a whole corridor of science labs all set up, ready to go. We've got a fantastic science team. We've got science technicians who work here full time and really getting to grips with like the exciting stuff that um, that you can do in science. My chemistry level was a long time ago, but it was exciting to me and it is very exciting to the pupils as well. So then this is this is my uh, department. So I'm a music and drama teacher. So expressive art. So these are some pictures from our shows. Now our shows are a real, I mean, obviously I'm biased, but they're fantastic. They're really, really brilliant. And they're, the students absolutely love them and the staff love doing them as well. So we have, um, staff in school who make all the costumes they might make them they might hire them in they might alter them so that's costumes that's something that pupils can get involved with as well that's really brilliant all the sets we are so so lucky with our um with our dt and art staff in school and our technicians they create all the sets do all the painting we've got beauty and the beast here um Beating the BC in the top corner in the stained glass window, all of that was painted by the staff and the students, so that's fantastic. So sets is another thing. Um, so the show's a huge, huge highlight of our calendar. We have the um, uh, professional company come in and work on the lights and the sound and the students can get involved with that as well, so it's really exciting. Um, as you can see in the front of one of these pictures here, we've got our orchestra and the orchestra is you know, wholly played in by students, which is such a real privilege. Um, I've taught in three different schools and this one is, we by far have the most students who play in the orchestra and get involved in running rehearsals for the, you know, for singing and running the sectional rehearsals for the orchestra. And it's a real, it's a real privilege and a tradition we're really, really proud of. So that's part of drama. And then this is more more of our music. Um, so we've got quite, I mean, when we're back up running and we're not having to restrict ourselves with um, COVID health and safety policies, we'll have, we have choir, we have an orchestra, we have wind band, we have percussion groups, we have um, a battle of the bands as often as we can, kind of once a term we have battle, of, and most of these are pupil organised and things that pupils want to do. So it's a really busy, really busy life in our music and drama department. And then we come on to art and come on to graphics and the students produce fantastic work. They get really involved, got amazing art staff and fully kitted out art rooms with all sorts of resources and they do all sorts of amazing work. And I know the art department's really active on Twitter as well, so you can have a look at the kind of things they produce. 
and PE as well is within our performance expressive arts um, department and we have the um, young sports ambassadors and they lead all sorts of groups they work with the primary schools leading all sorts of groups um, we have rugby tours we have football tours it's really really busy our PE staff are completely dedicated they're out there lunch times after school rain or shine putting on these fantastic opportunities for people OK, and then we get on to the maths department. So maths, obviously the pupils will have done that in primary school as well. And it's just that they're excited about what different things they learn. They're excited about the different challenges they do. This is an example of something that we did with year seven year before last. And we worked with um, TechniQuest in Cardiff and they had a fantastic day. I was lucky enough to go for an hour. They had a fantastic day. They had to um, they have to barter for their for their goods to build the models so that was all the economics of it all they have to barter for their goods they had to run a stock market and and kind of put prices and value on different things that was brilliant and then they had to engineer the model itself it was a really and it was all through lego it was a really wonderful day so that's fantastic things that happen in maths okay and then we've got languages and we're really lucky to be teaching spanish this year um they go on spanish trips there are all sorts of all the different cultural things that we can do in Spanish. Um, you know, we are global citizens, we're Welsh citizens, we're UK citizens, we're global citizens. So Spanish is a fantastic um, skill for the students to acquire and they really, really enjoy the lessons as well. And humanities as well. Humanities is obviously something most of the people study at primary school. So we've got history, we've got geography, we've got RS. And they're a really, really busy department, all sorts of things happening down there. We always do a big volcanoes project. The children love it. They have to build the volcanoes. They make them explode. It's very exciting. They learn all about Pompeii as well. They write diaries from the point of view of someone who's living through the whole experience. It's really interesting, really gets the children thinking about the wider world. Always a trip to Normandy. And just really immersing ourselves in learning about different world cultures around the room. So it's RS, history and geography that we study in humanities. And then the English department, this is a uh, pictures from a while ago when we were dressing up for World Book Day. It's myself up there, I was Bilbo Baggins. Um, we've got one of our staff members from The Handmaid's Tale, we've got a golden ticket and we've got James Bond, obviously. So staff and year seven pupils getting involved there. Really important way that we organise the, um, the classes in English. Um, we don't just like stream on core ability. We look at their three skills within English. We look at their oracy, their reading and their writing. And so the sets are based in a really holistic way, looking at where do the pupils have a skills deficit and how can we improve that skills deficit? So then once that skill is improved, it might be that pupils move to a slightly different lesson and they work on a slightly different skill. So we're always kind of holistically looking at them as whole students, not just one one skill of English. We're looking at them as a whole and the pupils really have really responded to that way of working and they really enjoy it. Um, and it just means that we're always challenging and we're always supporting and scaffolding within the English department. So help and support is obviously really important to us. I like to look at year seven as a kind of trial run for the whole of the school. Obviously we want to progress in our lessons. Obviously we want to really hit the ground running with making progress and enjoying our education, but making sure that we have that really firm stability so then we can build the blocks as we go on up to year 11 and A levels. So form tutor, number one, you'll see them every day in the morning for form time, 20 minutes in the morning. Um, like I said, in transition, we spend a lot of time getting to know our form tutor and creating those bonds with the teacher and with the wider wider form group. So your form tutor will be number one port of call. Um, don't have a pen in the morning, forgotten your homework, forgotten your PE kit, wanting to store your PE kit somewhere, all of those things. We go to our form tutor first of all. If the form tutor can't, can't help, is unsure, um, then it would come on to me as a year leader, a pr progress leader and just the whole pastoral um, the whole pastoral team as a whole. So we're very lucky to have um, a learning coach, Miss Rulier, who works with Year 7 and the other years, but I like to steal her mainly for Year 7s. Um, and we've got the whole pastoral team there who are really, you know, that's our job to support and make sure the children are happy. Um, Mrs O'Rourke is a does a fantastic job with the pupils at school. She's our ASD coordinator, so she she doesn't run the Invisible Army, the pupils themselves run it. She just kind of facilitates it happening, gives them a place to meet. So the Invisible Army is a brilliant organisation in conjunction with Bullies Out. 
Um, and the pupils are really proud to take part. So they have you know, proper training with external visitors. They wear their um, Invisible Army badges with pride and they just keep an eye on what's going on in the school. Is anyone sitting by themselves looking a little lost? Can they see any kind of untoward behaviour happening? Um, and it's totally voluntary, but the pupils take it really seriously and they really enjoy doing it. And it's a wonderful thing for Year 7s to get involved with as well, just making sure that everyone's happy, everyone's safe, everyone's being looked after. We have in the past run happiness workshops with, um, we're really lucky to have an educational um, officer from Cruise Wales based in the school. And the happiness workshops are, like they say, they make, make the pupils feel happy, which is wonderful, but it's also introducing them to what kind of skills do they have, what kind of skills would they like to work on, and then ultimately down the road, what kind of careers or what kind of vocations might they be drawn to. So they are happiness workshops, they do celebrate the pupils and what they're good at and helping them feel settled and safe, but also it's a nice way for the pupils then to start thinking about oh, what kind of skills do I want to improve on and what do I need for the future, whatever my future goal might be. Um, in the past we've run homework clubs at lunchtime, if um, pupils haven't got the time at home or if they haven't got a quiet space to come and work or if they need to use a laptop or an iPad, I run the homework clubs at lunchtimes, normally Monday lunchtimes and the pupils can come in and just finish off any bits and pieces. Um, we have ELSA and we have face-to-face -face counselling available in school as well. Mrs Rullier, our learning coach, um, is also an, an, an ELSA assistant, so it's an emotional literacy. Um, and it started years ago as a bereavement support for um, primary school children, but it's really, really effective in secondary school setting as well. And it's expanded now, not just for bereaved children, but for anybody who just needs to be able to kind of express themselves and put their any fears that they may have or any kind of emotional needs to put it into words. Um, so emotional literacy is it's hugely important and then we do have a face-to-face -face counselling um, scheme which is an external company who comes in and counsels the students and then finally we have used in the past a six-month buddying scheme which has been really really beneficial um, you know you might need a buddy for any reason um, not sure about getting around the building or perhaps the corridors are quite noisy and, and that's a new experience to you if you've come from a small primary school perhaps um, Perhaps you want somebody to talk to that, that isn't a member of staff, somebody that may be a bit younger that you can relate to. So all our six form buddies have had safeguarding training and they're all um, very professional in the way they approach their buddying scheme. So it's really beneficial for the six formers, but really beneficial for our new learners as well. Just to have another smiley, friendly face that they know they can go to if they need any help. So this is um, a, a, you know, a mock of what extracurricular activities we have on. Obviously at the moment, unfortunately, we are not able to run our, our lunchtime clubs and our after school clubs, excuse me, but we've got a wide range of things happening there. Okay, so it might seem a long time until um, our new lovelies coming up when they leave, but just to give you a bit of an overview, um, so last year, the summer we've just had, 98% of our pupils um, went on to their first or second choice higher educational places of study. Um, so even we had, you know, all, for all the confusing, confusion around the A-level results, we were really, our six form team work incredibly hard and we had 98% of our pupils going on to where they wanted to go to. Lots of our pupils go on to Russell Group Universities. Um, so really strong research foundations and every year we do have pupils that go on to Oxford or Cambridge which is you know, really impressive. Um, we have a special SERIN program which really stretches our math learners in the sixth form um, and we've got study schools that have happened previously. Students have gone over to Yale in America to, to take part in those. Um, apprenticeships, so we have really good links with local businesses and with local apprenticeship schemes. So we've got Dyson, we've got engineering, it's a really close link for us as a school. And work-based placements, you know, depending on what kind of route our pupils want to go on, go on to, it might be that work-based placement is the, is the best for them. So that's a real success we have as well. And then we have, you know, vocational courses at college or hairdressing, that kind of thing. So um, our, everyone who leaves us, they've either gone on to pursue more education or they've gone on to a job. And that is the end of my slideshow and the end of my talking at you. So if you have any questions, I would love to be able to, to answer them. Okay. 
Okay, so we've had a question. <clears throat> Um, what is the food like at Chepso School? And do we have our own catering team? And the food is amazing. <laughs> uh, we do have our own catering team. Um, we have a lot of pupils who might have different allergies. So what I often find is best is to welcome that pupil and parents and carers into school before we start. Um, just so they can speak to the catering team and find out you know, what the allergy is and how best to support that. Um, and, and the catering stuff, you know, they, we make everything on site um, as much as possible. So any we have, you know, say a peanut allergy, it's really, really important, obviously, for our catering staff to know what the allergies are, or if there's any intolerances, and also just to put everyone's mind at rest that that can be 100% accommodated. Um, the food is brilliant. We have hot meals at lunchtime. So, you know, like, um, like uh, oh, yesterday, so there's steak and kidney pie we have and vegetables and mashed potatoes, so like a proper hot meal. Um, and you can eat that in the canteen, you can eat that in the arts hall. So we have that at lunchtime. So we have <clears throat> a huge range of sandwiches, huge range of hot paninis, wraps, things like that. We have two catering places in the school. We're really lucky. So we've got the, the main canteen where you can go for your main hot meals and your puddings. Um, and then we've got the pod which is a bit more of a grab and go. You know, you can just buy your peanut, buy your sandwich, buy your wrap. And then we also have a separate six form catering, uh, catering canteen, a cafe as well, where it's just for six formers and they can have hot drinks and lunches and things like that. Um, but yeah, the, the pupils <laughs> rave about it. And I know in English at the moment, they're writing letters back to their primary school and quite featuring heavily in quite a lot of them is all oh, the food's really good. And so, yeah, that is really good. Um, so thank you for that question. We've got another question. My child is very nervous. Is there support from the school to aid in the transition process? Well, I hope um, I've answered that question already, but being nervous is completely, completely normal for the children and for the parents. As a parent myself, I know that I will be nervous when my children reach that age and they're moving on because it does suddenly feel like a really big step and it's they, people have much more independence all of a sudden and it's not the, it's not the same as primary school. Um, I think the biggest change is all the different teachers um, that the pupils have. It's not just, you know, you get used to one teacher that the pupils might have in primary. So suddenly we have all these different teachers. So that's a big change. Um, so yet yeah, there's lots of support in process, lots of support in place to support the process. Um, I think I personally, the number one thing is that you communicate with us what the anxieties are, what your nervousness, nervousnesses are. Um, so we can specifically support that. Um, if there's a specific need that your child has um, you know it's really important for us to know it might be that we all have had children who've come through our transition process and we're used to dealing with things like that um, it might be a brand new need that we've not come across um, I, and, and you know we ha have a huge wealth of experience in the transition team so I'm pretty sure we all will have heard it before but it's always important just to tell us what what the what the anxiety is what the need is and we'll we'll go from there So just while we wait, I can see another question typing there. Um, so Welsh, I've been asked a question about Welsh, saying like, what what do we have to study Welsh? What do we do in Welsh? Um, yes, we have to study Welsh. We're a, we're a school in Wales um, as part of the national curriculum. And what I find is really important is that if the pupils just kind of enter into the lessons with a spirit of just positivity and general can do and like, you know, I'm just going to give it a go. Um, it makes learners much more desirable in the workplace, having a second language um, and having that skill, you know, learning languages like learning music. I'm often asked by my year nines, oh, miss, we don't want to do music. Why are we still doing music? Any of these subjects, they just give you a wider range of skills. So, you know, like teamwork and that kind of dedication to an end goal and practicing and being able to manage your own time. All of those things, all of those soft skills that are really hugely beneficial to employers. Um, you practice those in subjects like Welsh and in music and in drama that you might not necessarily want to pursue for the rest of your lives, but are just really important that you have that grounding in so that then, you know, years later, you might think, oh, yes, I remember that music lesson where Miss Miller made me do such and such. Um, and it's just it's just a really good grounding to make these wide, cute, you know, adults that are well-rounded individuals, which is what we're aiming for. Uh, so we've got another question. <clears throat> is Welsh and Welsh back the same subject? Very good question. No, they're not the same subject. So Welsh 
we study um, from year seven up to year 11, as in the language of Welsh, so reading, speaking, writing, that's Welsh, and Welsh baccalaureate um, is kind of, when I was at school, we had to do something called general studies. So it's looking at, so quite similar, we're looking at enterprise, we're looking at being a global citizen, we're looking at equality and diversity, all these things come under Welsh baccalaureate. So it's kind of similar to the English baccalaureate. Um, and you start looking at that in year 10 when you start your GCSEs. Um, and it's a really valuable qualification to have. Again, it's just really making sure we are well-rounded individuals when we leave. It practices your research skills, which is hugely beneficial if you want to go into university. You know, being able to research a subject, being able to follow footnotes and being able to create a bibliography, all those things, you know, they're skills that, that we need to have um, as, as academic young people. Um, so it, is, it can be really interesting and really beneficial. So again, the same, attitude I say with Welsh or music or with drama or any of these subjects that you think well I'm not going on to a career in that so why do I need it um, you know if you just approach it with this kind of can do attitude um, then it's it's a fantastic skill to have so uh, another question that I've been asked um, So Welsh back, is it actually worth anything? Oh, so the grades. Yes, I, well, at the end of the subject, I'm just going to double check, but it is worth, you do get, you, you can get um, grades to go on to the sixth form and you can get UCAS points from them as well if you do it in the sixth form um, and doing it at GCSE, you get, it is worth, I think you get the equivalent of, it's exactly the same as any of the other GCSEs. I'm just being told over my shoulder. Um, so a question about supporting our additional learning needs students. Um, so we're really, really lucky. We have um, a, a whole TA, a teaching assistant team in the school. Um, we have a student support centre that runs in the morning. So if any of our pupils, you know, just need a quiet place where they can go, maybe have a bit of breakfast, have a cup of squash, just give themselves a calm place to start the day. They can talk through their timetable with one of the teaching assistants down there just to make sure they know where they're going, they know what they're doing. Um, for some of our students, change is quite quite tricky to manage for them. So um, in the mornings then, that's where they, they could be told, well, actually, you know, Miss Miller isn't in today, but you've got a cover teacher. So they can work through that change, work through that kind of sudden surprise. So it's not such a big deal when we get into the classroom, so they're well prepared. Um, they can do all that first thing in the morning. They can go down to the student support centre and it's just a really quiet, calm place to, to check off everything, make sure there's no red flags for the day. Um, the student support centres open at break and lunchtime as well, um, so they can get their lunch, get their food, they can go down there, there's games down there, um, board games, they can do some homework if they want. It's just a really nice quiet space for any of our pupils with additional learning needs to access. Um, we are running a really fantastic programme at the moment called Accelerated Reader. Um, so all the pupils, we're encouraging all the pupils to have a reading book with them at any time. So when I whiz around the year seven form groups in the morning, you know, if they've done all their work, done the assemblies, if they've checked off their equipment list, if they've done absolutely everything, then they're sitting there and they're reading their books, which is really great. It's really nice to see. It's interesting to see what books the children are reading, interesting to have conversations. Oh, I've read that book and oh, tell me about this book. That's really great. Um, so Accelerated Reader, they choose their book from this massive online library. Um, they read through the book, they can log what, you know, they can create their own library, log what different different books they're reading, and at the end they can have some questions about the book, a bit of an analysis of the book, and it really encourages the pupils just to start reading, you know, because for so many of our pupils, um, reading is just such a really important skill to keep practicing and keep practicing so they can improve that skill. Um, so accelerated reading is fantastic. Um, we're really lucky that we have um, an assistant airlink in school as well, who, um, for example, can assess handwriting speed. You know, if you feel that your child, the handwriting is a skill that your child is struggling with, perhaps, so it can be that we assess handwriting speed. And, you know, if your child qualifies, then we can start to build an extra time for handwritten um, tasks in lessons. It might be that actually using a laptop as well as handwriting is the best way for your child to learn. So all these sorts of things we can access and we can we can put together for the child. It's just about finding out what is going to work best for your child as they move around the school.
So um, another question, just to link back to the canteen question. So um, we're a cashless school, which um, is just much, much easier. We don't have anything going missing. We don't have anyone losing anything. Um, so we're a cashless system. In normal times, we operate on a fingerprint, a bio biometric way of working. Um, so the, all the pupils when they start in year seven have their fingerprint scanned. And then when they want to buy whatever they want to buy, um, they just press their thumb on, on the reader and it flashes up and that's it. Um, obviously we're not pressing, you know, we're not touching as much as possible. So at the moment we're just doing it on a name name basis. Um, and so £2.10 will buy you a hot meal, a pudding and a drink um, in from the canteen. So it's very good value. <laughs> it's very nice food. Um, uh, so that's how we're operating at the moment. People are just saying their name. Um, and then you can top up the money from home. Uh, it's parent pay, parent mail. It's all all part of the same same thing. So that's that's how we send out messages as a school as well. How we're sending out letters all through um, parent mail, and and it's linked. And often lots of our primary schools use the same system, so we can link into them. So it's it's very streamlined and smooth. Um, but it's it's a great way, and we pay for school trips like that as well. And um, yeah, and any correspondence from the school just goes out on a parent mail. So that's a handy way of making sure letters don't get lost in the bottom of bags or anything like that. Do we have any more questions? Well, hopefully I've answered all your questions. Um, I'm sorry if I've, you know, perhaps a bit, of, a bit too much PowerPoint there, but hopefully it was all the information that you needed. But really, I just think the important thing is that you just see transition as a way of us being able to get to know your students and your students being able to get to know us. And any issues, any problems, any anxieties, any anything, please let us know. That's the way of us. Um, kind of smoothing out any problems that, that might occur or um, and, and just making sure everyone's everyone's happy. So I think that's the end of me here. So just to remind you that Mr Sims, our head teacher, will be doing the same thing, a live Q&A at midday today. And Mrs Mellon, who's our assistant head teacher, she will be doing her live, live Q&A at three o'clock this afternoon. But thanks ever so much. If you have any questions at all, please just drop me an email. I'd love to hear from you.